Feel the sweet spirit of the Lord in this place. Thank God for his grace, his mercy. Father, I come before you, Lord, and I pray as I get ready to step into the page as you were divine word. I do not do take this lightly. Lord Jesus Christ, I want to be obedient to you. I'm asking you for the divine gift of the Holy Ghost that you will help me to communicate to your children what you have communicated to me. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, as this season that we have here that we celebrate the Christmas, the Easter season, I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that you will help me to ever realize the depths of your love and grace and what you have done and what it means to have you as a Savior. I pray, Lord Jesus, again, give your blessings. Help me with my limited intellect, my limited ability to speak, my limited vocabulary. Give me the anointing, I pray, in Jesus' name. All of God's children says, Amen. Amen. I believe that God can move. I appreciate the words, amen, of our pastor friend because it just goes right along with what I believe that God would have me to say this morning and talking to you. This is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is the Sunday before Easter, the resurrection. It was on this day that they celebrated Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem where they cried Hosanna and all of the things that are going on and it, it's amazing I'm going to read to you in just a minute something but small things are important to God please, please don't ever think they're not and old brother Clendenin used to tell us many of you that went through the school he would say what's true in the natural is true in the spiritual so it's always true you can always find a parallel in the spiritual for something that is going on in the natural <clears throat> I read this many years ago because we lost the nail we lost the shoe because we lost the shoe we lost the horse because we lost the horse we lost the soldier because we lost the soldier, we lost the battle. Because we lost the battle, we lost the war. Because we lost the war, we lost the cause for which we went to war. And everything was lost because of a nail. One nail. It's amazing when you think about that. Little things matter to God. Little people matter to God can I hear an amen? amen praise the Lord I I asked the Lord many years ago and this is my personal prayer if you don't have a personal prayer I encourage you to make a personal prayer I encourage you to seek God and there's something that God created you for and put you on this ball of mud hurling through space to accomplish for his glory and for his kingdom very early one morning God spoke to my heart and I love it because he always speaks the word to me when he's talking to me he said work son while it's day for there's a night coming when you're not going to be working again and I realized that and that's found in John 9 and 4 Jesus talking and I simply jotted down I said I must work for God while I have life because at death everything's going to cease that I am doing now and if I'm going to work for him on this side it is said I don't know where that I got this I haven't found the quote anywhere maybe you know about it I don't I think it just developed but it's been said we go through this world just once and what we do or do not do will have eternal consequences and as I was studying I put that on the bulletin board behind my desk in my office at home and God just dropped it into my spirit how we live echoes 
in eternity. How you and I live echoes in eternity. If I go before Sharon, she can write that on my coffin. Use a felt tip marker. Don't pay no extra money. Amen. My personal prayer is this. At the end of my life, I pray that it is not being lived selfishly or in vain. I pray that my days have meant something to God and to my fellow man. May it be said that I fulfilled Romans 8 and 29, that I was conformed to his image, or if you want to put it in contemporary terms, I imaged him. May it be said that I fulfilled Proverbs 11 and 30, he that winneth souls is wife is wise. May my final words be said over me that I was a servant to God first and to others second. I pray that prayer every day of my life. I open up my prayer journal, and it's something that I wrote. And I mentioned that here about six months ago. I read that to you along with some other stuff that I pray. And some people say it's kind of lofty, ain't it, brother? Well, it might be, but I serve a great big God. And we couldn't do what we've done unless it was God. I want to draw some parallels from the Word of God this morning, if I can, for just a few minutes. And, Tammy, let's go to the book of St. Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. I'm reading from the King James Version. You can follow along in whatever version you have. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethany, Bethpage, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith to them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as you be entered into it, you shall find a colt tied whereon never a man set. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, What do ye this? Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways met, and they loose him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye loosening the colt? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, now notice this, and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees and strawed them or laid them in the way. And they that went before, now notice this, they that went before and they that followed cried, saying. Now we read that and we say, Hosanna. But that, that, that's not the way that works. They cried, saying, Hosanna! Hosanna! That's the way they were crying out. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Some of y'all can go back to sleep. It's amazing. I read this. And again, I, I find this story amazing. Some of you may remember this. I got to looking at some of my notes, and I, I preached on this little donkey in 1996. So those of you with a real good memory can go back and say, I heard you preach that before. So that's when I had talked about this. I want to say this, there's no little things with God. There are no little things with God. God's hand is manifested in the feathers of a moth's wing. You ever hit a moth and you got that fuzz all over you? Those are actually feathers. I looked that up. Google will make you smarter than you ever realized you were. Amen. His hand is manifested in all that. You ever look really deep at the eye of an insect? God's hand is manifested in the eye of an insect. In the folding or the unfolding of a flower. In the amazing veins that run through a leaf on any plant out here or a tree. I find these things as amazing as the creation of the universe. You may not, but I do. And I'm, I'm astounded, the laws at which the planets move. 
even for you and I, God says this about me and you and about what we go through in life. He never said this. I have people that come up to me all the time and they say, Preacher, I never, and I, I think they want me to brag on them. They say, Preacher, I never bother God with the small stuff. I only bring the big stuff to God. I said, that's because you're greater than me. Because I bring everything to God. As a matter of fact, the word of God says, in everything, in everything, make your request known to God. Amen. In this scripture this morning that we read to you, I see a small, seemingly insignificant animal. And I'm just going to say this. You'll see them on farms today. I've seen them around here. We have a little donkey. I don't know. I'm sure they're everywhere else. And some of these little donkeys have a cross on their back, and they're called Bethlehem donkeys. I want to compare him to me and you. Can I do that? Now, I'm not calling you dumb as a whatever. I'm just going to show you some things here. Number one, I've only got three things to show you about him. Number one, he was available. Somebody say the word available with me. He was available. Man, Jesus knew exactly where that animal was. I got a news flash for you. Jesus knows where you are. You may say, well, you know, I... You're living in a strip of land, and I shared this with a group last night. And this is, this is, you can Google it if you don't want to believe me, but it's called an area that no one wanted. It was literally called no man's land. Some of you have heard me say this. When West Virginia separated from Virginia, they only wanted down to Route 52 over here that runs through the middle of the county. They did not want anything below 52. They wanted Virginia to keep it. Virginia didn't want anything above 616, 635. It runs across the mountain here. They said, that's as far as we want. So they fought for years over this, and this was called no man's land. I can let you in on something, folks. That thought and that attitude still works in politics today. Should be a red light just flashed up on YouTube. I can tell you now, Virginia may not have wanted us. West Virginia may not have wanted us. We may have been called no man's land, but God wanted this strip of land, half of this county. God wanted it. God wanted it. It's one of the things he said to me. He said, I care about McDowell County. I care about Jolo, West Virginia. I care, I care about everything that's south of 52 and I care about what's above 52. I care. God knows exactly where we are. Now listen to me. Some of us are supposed to be available to God. Newsflash, some of us aren't available to God. We go on our own way. I want to say this. There's some of you here today that God wants to save your soul. And he's already been dealing with you for more than one service. And you ain't too bad. You ain't gone too far that God can't save you. I promise you that. Well, preacher, what if I committed the unpardonable sin? You wouldn't be in this house if you did. That's in the book, honey bunch. I just want you to know. But God is saying through me this morning and through the pastor already, are you available for salvation? And here's something else for those of you that saved and just satisfied that you are. Are you available for service? Are you available to do what God wants you to do? This little animal on this day that we celebrate Palm Sunday, amen, was available, was available. God wants me to ask you the question, where are you? Where are you really? You, you know, I know you're sitting here physically, but where are you mentally and spiritually? You, you know, have you got enough pride and say, well, you know, one, one guy told me recently, I was talking to him about his call, about his salvation. He said, yeah, God has called me to preach, and I really believe he has, and, and, and I don't doubt it. 
I didn't call him. He said, and I'm waiting to preach my first sermon. And I'm not going to preach to any less than like 500. I said, good luck. That's all I can tell you. Good luck. He said, well, I, I, I thought, I thought, I said, you can think a lot of stuff. He said, that's nothing but just the seat of pride. And that's where he's going to sit there and he's going to stay there. And then there's some people who says, I know God called me and I know God wants me to do stuff, but I just don't want to do that. I want to do this. That's the spirit of stubbornness. And they sit in the seat of stubbornness. And then there's others that are not available to God because of deep hurts. They have been hurt so bad in life. They've had things that's happened to them. And one lady told me, and my wife recently said, if God really loved me, why did he let me go through all of this? Can I let you in on something? There's a lot of people in the kingdom of God that's very fruitful in the kingdom of God that's went through some deep hurts. But the Spirit of God helped them to overcome that. So my question again is, where are you? Can I tell you, so I've been talking about whenever we stand before God, it's going to be a horrible indictment on that day to have him to say, you weren't available for me to do what I wanted to do through you and with you in the kingdom of God. You were not available for me to use. Wow. Wow. Preacher, that's tough. Yeah, I know it's tough. You think it didn't get preached to me? Sure, it's tough. I thank God for what God's doing. I thank God for some of the things that we're getting ready to anoint some people in some different areas of ministry that's getting ready to come forth that I've been praying for personally for a long time concerning the youth and concerning some things to go on. But listen to me. I thank God that somebody finally come to me and said, Pastor, we're available. We feel called of God to do this or that. Can I let you in on something? If we're not available, sooner or later, this church is going to shut down. Should the Lord tell you it's coming, I'm not going to live forever. I'm not sure I want to, not here. Amen. Amen. So number one, this animal was available. Number two, he was submissive. He was submissive. Amen. You remember verse two in this portion of scripture that we read? This animal was unbroken. When you've got an animal, and you can go into the Greek and read everything you want to about this, if never a man had set on that animal tells us that he was untrained, he was unbroken, he was untamed. Yet we find this thing so amazingly happening, he submitted himself. He gave in to a burden that he had never carried before. May I ask you something? <laughs> I was talking to a brother, and I've heard this so many times. Well, preacher, I just don't have the education. I just don't have the skill. Can I let you in on something? Education and skill is good, and it has this place. But I've never seen God use an educated mule yet. <laughs> no, sir. Amen. No, 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 no. No, I, I, I mean, God uses what man can't. I've learned not to compare myself with other people. Preacher, I'd preach. I had a young man say recently, I'd preach if I could preach like you. The Bible says if we compare ourselves to other people, we're not really smart. If I could just sing like she sings or he sings, if I could just play an instrument like they do, it's not smart. Amen. I was asking the Lord not long ago, I said, God, I, I would like to see this and this and this, and I wouldn't mind picking up a new musical instrument. And here's what he said to me, and that's when I carried my guitar up to the little church you're pastoring, Pastor Sparks. He said, I ain't giving you anything else until you use what you have. I said, thank you, Lord. I said that one time, and they, somebody told me, he said, uh, I don't believe the Lord uses the word ain't. 
you ain't him. He talks to me in the vernacular that I need to understand. Amen. So I'm going to ask you something. Are, are you waiting to be like somebody else or are you just going to be you? I'm, I, God's asking, will you submit your life to him? Will you submit your life? Will, will you be available? Will you be submissive? Preacher, I'm going to do that. When? When? Next week's Easter. My coffin could be laying in front of this altar before next Easter. This Easter. We have no promise of tomorrow. Amen. That's good stuff. Thirdly, and the last thing I noticed you're drawing a parallel with is this little animal was not afraid. Somebody say not afraid. Not afraid. Oh, I like that. Amen. I, I, I'm still amazed at this incredible event that you and I are considering in these verses of Scripture. An untrained, unbroken donkey was ridden down a crowded street. Think about that. And people holler. Anybody besides me ever rode a horse? You ever rode a half wild horse? I used to have a horse, weighed 1,300 pounds, big old standard bread. Carried me all day, sweat, I mean, he'd throw him, paw the ground, still wanted to go. And I had to break him every time I got on him. He was just full of life. And I can tell you now, I would not have rode him down a street where a bunch of people were hollering and where people were waving palm leaves putting them in front of him on the ground. I get about like near to the front seat and somebody pulled their coat off. Yeah, can you imagine that? Woo, Hosanna, Hosanna. And throw it down in front of him. Anybody besides me ever fooled with a, a donkey? You can tame a horse quicker than you can one of them. I'm just talking about reality here, folk. But he was Jesus. And he was a donkey. And Jesus was very man as well as very God. Amen. But I'm amazed he wasn't afraid. What, what's fear got to do? Fear paralyzes people. Some people. I've had people say, Brother, I just don't know what people will think. Big deal. I don't know what people will say. What's people going to think? Not long ago, I was at a restaurant with a, a minister. And I said, you want to pray? And he looked around and went, I said, you care if I pray? <laughs> Amen. I don't want to make a scene. After all, brother, we have to be politically correct in this day and hour we're in. I said, oh, I want to be spiritually correct. I'm not really concerned about politics. <laughs> you see, here's the deal. There are people in this house and in God's kingdom everywhere that should sing a song, but they're afraid to because they're afraid of what people will say. You see, there's people that need to teach a class. There's people that need to testify or witness to their loved ones. There are people, thank you. I think this is the first time for some of you folk that's ever went on any kind of a mission trip. Thank you. There are people that are afraid to go. They're afraid of failing. <laughs> if I refuse, get this. This is something worth writing down. Come from God, didn't come from me. If I refuse to obey God, I've already failed. That's good stuff. Amen. I've already failed. God specializes in using people that fail. Moses, you remember him? For the first 40 years of Moses' life, he was somebody. He thinks that the children of Israel are understand he kills an Egyptian. Somebody went to Tadlin, put it on Facebook. Next thing you know, everybody's after him, going to kill him. As far as Pharaoh's house. Y'all didn't know Facebook was back? Oh, yeah, I've been around a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. Amen. 
He runs to the backside of the desert 40 years. He's a nobody. God gets a hold of him at the burning bush when he's 80 years old and for the next 40 years he's somebody in the kingdom of God because he's no longer afraid to be obedient to the things of God. God specializes in using people that failed but are humble enough to admit it. Amen. You gotta do something to fail. I would rather have it in my record book in eternity that I tried and failed as to never tried anything. Have you ever failed, preacher? We don't have time to go into all of that. Sure, I've failed. Amen. But I'm in good company. Listen to me. God designed a glorious church. He designed a victorious church. If anything in this world had a right to be afraid, that little animal had a right to be afraid with everything that was going on. So yet again, he was available, are we? He was submissive, are you? He was unafraid, will we be unafraid? You ever wonder why Jesus didn't ride a big stallion? He will come back on a big white horse one day. You ever wonder why he didn't then? There's a lot of reasons. I know it was prophesied and I know all of that. But I really believe that God wanted to show me and you that he uses small, seemingly insignificant things in life. Wonder what that little donkey would say if we could bring him in here and let him testify. Now, preacher. Oh, no, no. Ask Balaam. Donkeys will talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. I believe he would have said this. I had one shot in life and I carried the king. I had one shot in life and I carried the king. My God. (laughs) Amen. We've got one shot, me and you. I don't get another shot at this life. I got one shot at it. You're not going to get another shot on this side. You got one shot at it now. (laughs) Your decision will determine your eternal destiny. Decision determines destiny. God will not fail those who he calls. I want to wrap this up. These final verses. I want to give this, Tammy, if you will. St. Matthew chapter 10, verses 28 through 33. I want you to listen to this. I'm going to tie this together. Talking about small things. Jesus talking here, and he said, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows, somebody say sparrows, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? That is less than a penny. And one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father. But (laughs) I always love this part. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. My buddy Billy sitting up here, I don't know if you know this or not, you will have on your head somewhere between 300 and 500,000 hairs. Some of you with thick heads of hair. Some of you are around 100,000. Some of you are blessed like me, and there's nothing there. But then brought to pass the saying that is written, there's not a hair between me and God. So y'all figure the rest of that out. Where is your head? Fear ye not, therefore, I love this, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Wow. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before man, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. That's some good stuff. Now I want to tell you this as I get ready to close. I read this many years ago. I do not know where the prison was at. I do not remember what state this prison was in. But one of the reformers in the prison, one of the leaders decided, this was a UPI article many years ago, to have a religious day. 
And so they invited three people to speak. Now, this is amazing. This is the way the world does stuff. One of them was an atheist. One of them was a Jewish rabbi. Now, you young people get a hold of this. They thought it would be good, and so they invited a 19-year-old Pentecostal youth pastor to be the third speaker. When they had this religious day, they didn't bring the regular population from the prison in. They cleaned out all the lifers, the worst of the worst in that prison, and they brought over a hundred of them, and they brought the meanest guards they had, the roughest guards they had, and armed all of them, and they were in the perimeter all the way around the cafeteria area where they set up the seats to listen to those three men talk. This young man sitting there in his own confession, I felt out of my element, but I'd been invited, I prayed, and I felt God speak to my heart and say, go. And he said, the atheist got up first and said they knew that, you know, I, we had to submit everything and I knew what he was and his credentials and he knew about the Jewish rabbi. And he said he spent the biggest part of his time talking about me. He said, this little kid preacher over here is going to try to tell you that you need this age-old story about the blood of Jesus Christ. And he said, I'm telling you, it ain't worth listening to. And he talked a little bit about self-help. The Jewish rabbi got up and did the same thing. A young man said he just absolutely just went down the road. I mean, you don't need to be listening to this. It's, it's, it's all fake anyway. The young man said I was sitting there and I just said, Lord, what am I going to do? They've already crucified me. And he said all of a sudden they had a piano sitting there because he told them he sang a little. And he said, I felt the inspiration of God. And the Lord spoke to him and said, go to the piano and play My Eye is on the Sparrow. That's an old song. If you never, I'm not going to sing it to you. Google it. Amen. Listen to the words of that. His eyes on the sparrow. He said, I close my eyes and I begin to play. And he said, I've never felt the anointing like I felt it. He said, the Holy Ghost of God came up on me. He said, it's like I heard myself singing like I was listening to somebody else. He said, I played flawlessly. And he said, after that, after I finished the song, I spoke for 10 minutes. I made an altar call. Every prisoner in that room came and repented with the guards. To the report said the only two that didn't pray was the atheist and the rabbi. Later he asked one of the officials that was crying and talking about it felt so good to get saved. He said, why? What happened? And they said, you had your eyes closed, you didn't see. Way up there and way up high there was like little small windows and one of them was cracked about that far. You ever had a sparrow to fly in your house? You got about called the National Guard to get that rascal out of your house. He said, when you started singing, you closed your eyes, a sparrow flew through and circled your head several times and then lit on the back of that piano and watched you. When you quit singing, it flew straight up, straight out that little crack in the window. Can I let you in on something? God uses small things. Wow. You remember what he said. Those sparrows may be sold for just a little bit. God knows everything. God would have me, I'm going to conclude this. God would have me to tell you today that God knows exactly who you are and where you are. Nothing's hidden from him about you. Amen. And God would say, I care about you, and you're worth more than many sparrows. There are over 8 billion souls on this planet right now, and the number is growing. In the year of 2024, there will be an estimated 140 million births this year. 
as of last night, by 11 p.m., there were 385,000 born each day. That's how many are born each day. But as of 11 o'clock last night, by the time this year ends, there will be 60 million deaths across this world. There have been 13,675,630 and growing. I stopped at 11 o'clock last night because every second somebody dies across the face of this earth. People are divided into nine geographical races on this earth. There are over 300 there, 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 there are over 3,000 different languages spoken in the world today, not counting dialects. There are 195 countries in this world. And I got news for you. God knows every one of them. God knows every person in them. God knows you and I. He knows your name. Come here, Marlene. I want you to sing that song. Please. I don't just give orders. I said, please. She can give orders and say, come on, Kermit. Amen. God knows where Jolo, West Virginia is. God knows where Harrisonburg, Virginia is. God knows this man that has brought his church. He knows these precious folk from Convoy of Hope. God knows when you were born. All of you people that we congratulated you on your birthday. I used to say I was born at night, but not last night. I said that in front of my mom, and she said, who told you you was born at night? Mama gave birth to eight kids, and how in the world she ever remembers all this, I don't know. She adopted two more. And she said, you were born on July the 6th at 2 p.m., in the afternoon I said thank you God knew when I was born God knew when I was conceived God knew what mommy and daddy were going to name me before this earth's foundation was laid I have over my life been this close to death about four times. When that 1968 Camaro flipped over on top of me where you lost your son, 1972, and I was under that Camaro with this sitting on my chest under four and a half foot of water for three and a half minutes, and I almost died. I can tell you I was close to death. When that surgeon in 2005 said, you don't have five hours to live, I couldn't move my arms. I said, sharpen your knife and get busy. That was your doctor, what's his name over there? Charmin. Charmin. Charmin looked at his nurse and said, never have I had someone to tell me sharpen my knife. <laughs> Amen. I said, well, die if you don't do something. God knows the day that Charlie Rose is going to go, <sighs> and I'm gone. I'm gone. Preacher, why are you preaching that? I'll tell you, stand with me, please. Hear me, lost man or lost woman. Hear me, sinner friend. God wants you with him in heaven. That's what God wants. He knows your name. He knows my name. You got this one? Thank you. He knows my name. Oh, 
See, he knows your name, sinner friend. And here's the beauty of it. He wants to write your name down in the Lamb's book of life. He wants you to be called one of his children now and forever. I'm making an open invitation to you today. I'm asking you, will you come? Will you give me the privilege of praying with you to receive Jesus as your eternal Savior? God cares about you. Young lady, you're not here by accident. You're here by the very command of God, though you don't know it. You may have just come because somebody invited you, but God's saying, I arrange to have you here. Young man, God wants to save you. He wants you not to be ashamed. It's a very simple thing. You come up here, I'll tell you what you need to pray, and you can pray it. You'll be saved. You're making an open confession of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to say. You know my name. You know their name. God, give us the opportunity to see somebody, to see somebody find you as their personal Savior, as their personal Savior. I'm not going to go a long time. I'm giving you the opportunity. Will you come? We're going to pray for the sick here in just a minute. I know what she's coming for. But I want to see somebody get saved before we do anything. Just stand right here, sweetheart. You're going to be okay. We're going to pray for you. Anybody? Are you sure you won't come? Give me a couple of you ladies. Come here, please. Sister Rose, come here, please. Sister Rose. Heavenly Father, you see the cramps. You see this disease that has hit her. Mighty God and Heavenly Father, by the power of your love and your blood, will you touch, will you touch Tanya, Lord? Will you move right now? Mighty God and Heavenly Father, I pray that you will touch her. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, will you touch her? She has a real bad cramp right there in her life. Mighty God and Heavenly Father, by the God, do what nobody else can do. As these ladies are praying with her, she's not been out of the hospital but a few days, and her legs are just She's suffering so much with that. But God's able. Amen. Because she's important to God. If a little old fellow like me is important to God, you're important to God. I just knew at least one of y'all is going to get saved. I woke up at four o'clock this morning praying for you that you would get saved. I didn't know who was be the ones to be here. But I see at least four people here that are lost without Jesus. And that's just who I know, not the ones I don't know. So I'm asking you, I'm asking you, one more time, will you come? Let me pray with you. You don't become my disciple. You don't even become a member of this church. You become a disciple of Jesus. You become a child of the living God. God cares. God cares. God cares. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Our sister wants that touch of God, not to be distracted by everything else. 
but to be obedient to the things of God. It's a good prayer. this any of our visitors you're filled with God's divine spirit you're welcome to join us amen and pray but if you don't feel like coming up here reach forth your hands this way in Acts chapter 19 there were handkerchiefs that went out from the bodies of the apostle Paul and the Bible says whoever they touched were healed of their diseases whoever they touched oh, devils man. had to run I believe he still is real Let today as he was. Brother Jerry's got a good friend that's Let got heart trouble and he's going to take this handkerchief to him. We're going to pray over it in the name of Jesus and believe that the Holy Ghost of God is going to saturate it just like we poured oil on it. Reach forth your hands this way and pray. Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, for this man, this friend of Brother Jerry's. Mighty God and Heavenly Father that divinely needs a touch from you. God, I'm asking you, don't know his soul, but I pray that he'll be saved. I pray that you will do what nobody else can do. Mighty God and Heavenly Father, by the power of the Lord, he In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we call the name of Devin Sarton before you, Lord. We are believing that you're going to do what nobody else can do. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we call heaven and earth to record. I ask you to do a miracle. Do a miracle in that kid's life. Do a miracle in Jesus' name. Mighty God and Heavenly Father, Bless and touch as only your Holy Ghost can. God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bless it be the rock. Bless it be the rock of my salvation. Hold Heavenly Father, we pray for a lady. For you, oh God. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. 
I know you hear me when I pray. I was down there in trouble. You sent an angel by my way. Well, if you're sick and afflicted and you don't know what to do, just call on King Jesus and he will see you through. King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. I know you hear me when I pray, King Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray. I was down there in trouble, Lord. You sent an angel by my way. Amen. He's a good God. He's a good God. Amen. I'm excited about some of your futures let's enjoy this together for the glory of God can I hear an amen? amen amen got some exciting stuff coming up amen next couple of weeks we'll be announcing it to you amen God is good our All hearts clear believe God folk God cares about you believe God he cares amen, amen. all right yeah bro honor you today above all and we thank you for every every vessel that's here today lord and we honor you and lord we ask the seed be planted to those that were lost to that attend your house and we just honor you above all and we ask you to go before us in all that we do and prepare the way in jesus holy name we pray amen